and welcome to the Lobcast podcast, Mixers and Marketing. I'm Stephanie Donaldson, your hostess with the Marketing Mostess, and I'm thrilled to be joined with my Senior Director of Content, Kim Gouvazier. Kim, do you mind introducing yourself to any new listeners we might have out there? Sure, Stephanie. So as you said, I'm Kim Gouvazier, and I'm the Senior Director of Content Marketing here at Lob, and I love to chat and geek out on everything digital and direct mail. So thanks for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. And listeners, if you want to make the complimentary cocktail that goes with this episode, which is a dessert Manhattan, you're going to need one and a half ounces of chocolate cherry liqueur, one ounce of bourbon, and ice. So it's a very simple cocktail. You're going to add ice to your rocks glass, add the chocolate cherry liqueur and bourbon, and stir it gently. So cheers and welcome back to the show, Kim. Cheers. Pardon me for having mine in a coupe glass. I'm very uncouth, <laughs> but it still tastes delicious. <laughs> I feel like with some drinks, it really does not matter. I know like wine experts are like, no, the glass makes a difference, but does it? <laughs> we'll test it and see. <laughs> All right. Well, today we're going to be shaking things up a bit and we're actually going to be deconstructing some direct mail campaigns. Kim, you were just on our last Lobcast podcast where we discussed the key findings from the 2023 State of Direct Mail Consumer Insights Report. But today I was thinking we could shift gears and actually discuss real life marketing campaigns that are most likely to succeed based on what we've learned from our consumer survey. So we're going to focus this podcast episode on deconstructing direct mail that focuses on driving action, personalization, and sustainability. How does that sound to you? That sounds awesome. And I like the little double entendre there, the pun with shaking things up. I think that might have been a cocktail reference. So I'm ready. Let's do it. You know me, you know that was a cocktail reference. <laughs> All right, so kicking us off, let's talk about driving action. Our 2023 State of Direct Mail Consumer Insights report shows that 64% of consumers say that direct mail has inspired them to take action, including exploring websites and reviews or making a purchase. We also found that 65% say an offer or promotion caught their attention. So let's take a closer look at brands that are creating compelling offers and making it super easy to take action and maybe discuss some things that they could be doing a little bit better. So Kim, if you don't mind, I'm going to kick us off with an example of a mailer I got from Chase and they immediately start off by saying, you know, you qualify for a special offer. They know what's up. They know how to get my attention. So then we go down and congratulations, you qualify for this special opportunity on one of your credit cards. So they have the three little blocks that easily tell me all the major benefits of taking advantage of this offer, when I have to take action on it. And then they even list out the benefits even further. So I do like that they're that they're trying to get my attention right away by telling me that they have an offer for me and then just going straight into what it is. And then on the second page of the letter, they make it super easy to take action. They've got a QR code, they've got a phone number I can call. I can go onto the website, log into my account and it'll pop up right there. Super easy for me to take action. And again, they're doing a great job of catching my attention with the offer right on the mailer. And I also think it's very interesting that they're using a letter format, which I guess shouldn't be that interesting since you and I both know financial services do really well with letter formats. Again, it came in a plain white envelope, got my attention. Why is Chase sending me a letter? Typically it's something mm -hmm. I need to pay attention to, or it's a special offer that they know I'm going to want to act on. Yeah, there's also a lot of great um, financial services insights in that state of direct mail, the OU mm -hmm. the QR code for on your background. There's a whole section on that talking about which formats work and you're spot on with the letter format, so. Yeah, I think they did a great job there. Are you already a Chase customer or is that more like a new customer acquisition? I'm already a customer. They know what's because okay. it was uh, yeah. specifically tied to one of the credit cards that I have through them. Got you. So it's more of a retention tactic. Yep. That's and more. yeah, kind of like that pre-approval and introducing me to other service lines. Mm -hmm. Upsell, cross-sell. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> Good job, Chase. We'll give them a clap. So what'd you rate that out of 10? <laughs> I would say... I I think the letter works. I would give them either a seven or an eight, but I'm also a hard grader. But I, I know do, you are. <laughs> I think they had an opportunity to add just a little bit more personalization. They have so much data about me since I have accounts with them, credit cards with them. Yeah. 
they could have pulled in being like, hey, it looks like you've been spending a lot on travel. Here is why this <laughs> card is probably a really good fit for you because of these special perks. Or, hey, we saw you spent this much. That could have translated into this amount of points in this new system. Just really personalizing it. Because again, while they do, I do like they're using uh, the color blocks to get my attention. Had they specifically been like, hey, Stephanie, here's why you need this card because of your current spending habits, I'd be a lot more tempted to follow through and potentially take them up on their offer. Imagine if they followed that piece with a postcard that had like a picture of Greece on it, where I know you just returned from vacation and it was like, want to get away? Yep. You know? <laughs> Your next vacation waits. You know, we saw you buying like a lot of Greek pretty food cool. and Greek wine. Like, <laughs> do you want to go back and do that sooner rather than later? That would be a nice touch point, right? So I love that. It would be a nice touch point. All right. I've got one more example that I want to share and then I'll kick it over to you. Sure. So this is a self mailer that we got from system pavers. And the thing that I really love about them is right on the front, save up to $8,600 on your next outdoor remodel. And then on the back, save today with free demolition. So they keep repeating the idea of savings on this, even on the front mm -hmm. flap, save up to $8,600. It's an immediate, I can immediately understand exactly what I'm going to get when I take action on this mailer. I know how much I could potentially save. Now that they're not saying I'm definitely going to save that. It's the up to, <laughs> but I already know that this is going to be an expensive project because my husband and I are going to be redoing our backyard. This is very timely, especially since this, this mailer is a little bit older. It came right after we moved into our house. So they knew exactly what's up. They knew we were new. And you awesome. saved it all this time. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah, because, like their work looks beautiful. We, they have social proof on there with like a four-star rating. Um, and then again, I also, I guess I just really like kind of the three bullet points. I feel it's very clean. I can quickly scan this. I understand what I'm getting. And they're also pointing out other benefits of taking advantage of this offer with an unmatched warranty, 0% financing, and full service management of the design project. So I just I really love, oh, sorry. <laughs> I just want to say, really I think it's a, yeah, it's a really great piece that, again, the only thing I would recommend that they could have done a little bit better is, again, personalizing it. Uh, you and I have talked with some of our customers who talk about, you know, using variable data and they could have easily pulled in being like, hey, here's some work we've done in your neighborhood or your town. Check out these houses. We've worked on houses like yours before. Or, you know, we know all the regulations in Blah County that I live in. Just would have probably helped speed the deal a little bit faster just because I would know that, oh, OK, they're, you know, local. They know what they're doing here. But obviously we've kept it. So we're still interested. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, I love a couple things too. A, I like the image on the front because it makes you sort of imagine being in that space, right? Yep. And like this really beautiful backyard during the pandemic, everybody went into like, let's fix up our spaces because now we're home so much. We're kind of getting out of that obviously now, but still now everybody has nice areas and they want to stay around. Um, I love the QR code and that's going to take me into my section because I'm a big QR fan, girly. Um, and I love that you kept it. That says a lot, right? Because in our state of direct mail consumer insights, we also found that, you know, 71% of people read direct mail almost immediately or the same day they bring it to their residence and then typically keep it for about two days. So well, this has been on there a lot longer. The, exactly, because it's also something physical that you can save, right? If that was an email, it would probably get very lost in your, your inbox, right? And yes, you can go and search it, but um, this is a physical reminder. And I love that you have that. Yeah, no, we've definitely hung on to this one. And again, I think for me, just that offer promotion caught my attention. I see the dollar amount and that I can immediately understand ding, ding, ding. how this <laughs> offer is going to benefit me. And so it makes it much easier to hold on to it. Because even though obviously we've missed the deadline for this specific <laughs> promo, we know they're going to have another one. So we can contact them say, hey, what are some of the current offers that you're running? Because again, we've kept it. We're obviously interested in them. I know what I'm getting from their service. Send them this recording. <laughs> Good job, guys. Whoever pavers, listen to our podcast. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Ready for me? Yep. Okay. So my first example is from a company called O Positive, and they sell like vitamins and supplements, and I'm a big health 
junkie. Um, and so I had ordered some of their supplements on Amazon, interestingly mm. enough. And I got this little postcard. It's a smaller size postcard format. And it's actually offering me 25% off my next Amazon order. I've actually never received an offer like this. So I thought that was really interesting. And um, it shows their whole array of supplements on here. And then it has a really easy to take action on QR code there. Nice. And then same thing, they reiterate the offer on the back. They have a fe female over here. Sorry, I'm female. So that's that imagery resonates with me. Um, you know, and at the top, it says, thanks for being a no positive customer. So this is a really nice retention campaign, getting me to be a repeat buyer. I'm absolutely going to take advantage of this offer. I've actually had it now a couple of weeks. As a reminder, when I do need to reorder, it's right here on my desk, like ready to go. So I think that was super cool. Um, what they could have done better was obviously maybe include my first name, um, something like that. Mm -hmm. Or um, I would say maybe like remind me of what I bought, but I know and I like actually instead of that, that they have their whole array. Because I'm like, maybe I didn't know they had all these other things. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, maybe I'll try that out. So stay tuned. The no, next one is a... Oh, okay. I was just going to say, <laughs> they are actually sending you back to Amazon because they're taking your preferences into account. They understand that... You preferred shopping through Amazon to get introduced to their brand. And instead of trying to be like, come to our website, they're like, we already know you enjoy shopping through Amazon. So let's meet you where you're at. Here's a coupon code. So you continue shopping where you want to, but also getting a discount from us. Absolutely. And I actually did that like kind of process where I went to their website. Then I'm like, oh, let me see if they have it on Amazon so I can use my prime and did all of that. Yep. So yeah, they're, they're, it's smart. Uh, so the second one is a little bit different. It's from a um, a fund that I'm invested in called Sweater, mm -hmm. Sweater Cashmere Fund, kind of a fun name. Uh, but they sent me a, a postcard, a direct mail postcard to check out like the portfolio and mm -hmm. get access to it. And so making it really easy to access, you know, the report by scanning this QR code mm -hmm. over here. And so I just thought that was a little bit different. Like typically you would get this in maybe a letter, right, in an envelope, but um, it doesn't have any information. It just shows here the QR code. It also has, you know, sweater ventures forward slash cashmere fund. Um, it also has a the sport and the the one eight hundred number, so I could access that as well. So uh, just quick and easy, and just a little bit different. It was an unexpected yeah. format. Any thoughts there? No, I really like that. And I again, I agree. I think it's kind of that nice little like tease it's not the envelope it's not something you have to open like if you're that interested you can quickly scan the qr code and they also send this to me an email as well but i like this additional mm. touch point because again so many things just get lost in my inbox so i like again this physical reminder this is also sitting on my desk so that i can go take a look at that when i have some spare time yep okay last but not least you know i have a little dog named teddy and um, he's getting old kind of like me. And so I'm looking for some new food options for Teddy. And I went online and I checked out the farmer's dog. Mm. And they have this cool little quiz where I filled in all these things, my dog's name, how old he is, how many pounds he is, activity levels, et cetera, et cetera. Um, lo and behold, I got a direct mail postcard that offers 50% off you know, and it talks about the, this dog food. It says, you know, not you shouldn't be giving Teddy these terrible little dried brown bits. You know, this is better for him. And offering me 50% off my first box. Whoa, I just disappeared. Crazy. Um, <laughs> on the back, it also has a really simple to use, you know, QR code again. So we're seeing QR codes everywhere. On both examples you showed, um, it had them as well. So uh, you know, people like them. We said in the survey on the Consumer Insights that 39% of consumers are likely to scan a QR code. And that number actually shoots up if you're in a younger age demographic. Mm. And I'll talk about that a little bit more um, as we go down into our personalization options. So um, QR codes just make it super, super easy for people to take action, which is what we're talking about. So I liked all of these. Yeah. Well, that actually makes me think, I have an example that I actually feel they could have done a little bit better, especially looking at some of the results that we've seen. So it's a postcard from Tommy John and it was around Christmas time. Oh, but so they have, they're really pushing the QR code on the front and scan for our best holiday offers. Mm -hmm. What are your holiday offers? Like, can you give mm -hmm. me a clue? Is it a dollar amount off? Is it a percentage off? Is it free shipping? If I buy, you know, three holiday sets and even on the back, like it just shop our gift guide. 
And I'm like, well, keeping it really vague to make you be like, well, what is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which almost to me, I'm like, if I don't know what I'm getting in, like, I'm not going to spend my time typing in your URL or opening my phone to scan your QR the code. The mystery thing doesn't work on you. The mystery did not work, or at least for this brand, because <laughs> again, I'm like, but but what is it? Like, what, what am I getting out of this one? So this is one area that while their mailers are beautiful, they've got great images, they've got really clever text on it. Like, give me, yeah. give me a sneak, like, tell me what I'm going to be saving. Because if it was like, at least like 25% off holiday sets, like, okay, I'll go check those out. But if yeah. it's just shop our gift guide. What? Yeah, falls a little flat. What's in it for that me? That was on this one. That's what I would say too. I gave them so much data. Like they know everything about Teddy at this point and none of that was included here. You know, it could have had a lot more information about Teddy on here. And unfortunately, Teddy was not mentioned. So, or Teddy. <laughs> They want but, him to be you know, we're all to... learning and testing and you oh, know trying sure. different things. And um it's just an additional way they could have personalized that. But all in all, I think all of these examples show show great things that people are doing with their direct mail marketing campaigns. Oh, definitely. So. I mean, we kept them for a reason, right? Right. Exactly. What's our next category? I like this. All right. So you teed me up pretty nicely. So we're gonna be talking about personalization. Personalization continues to be a key element for marketing success in direct mail. According to our 2023 State of Direct Mail Consumer Insights Report, 68% of consumers are more likely to engage with a message communication from brands that are personalized to them. So we already kind of talked about your Teddy example, but let's look at our mail <laughs> and see how these brands did in the personalization category. So first up, I actually have a customer acquisition, another letter, this one from the security company ADT. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I did like is they use my name everywhere, which normally, like when that first became the thing in email, like everything you opened, it was like, hey, Stephanie, hey, Stephanie, hey, Stephanie, did you check this out? People are doing that now in direct mail, but I also think it is a very easy tactic to get my attention because we are more likely to look for our names. We are more likely than to read what text is around that. And you don't often see that as much in direct mail. Again, email, it's become very saturated, but I think it could potentially be a really good tactic, especially on a letter format where I'm going to be scanning down the page. The other thing that I liked about them is kind of going back to our first point. So they talk about that I've been chosen for an offer. Again, okay, tell me more about your offer. I'm more likely to take a look at it. But then they really did do some good personalization. So I'm not a current customer of theirs. They don't know me. But dear Stephanie, and then they talk about keeping security at the top of my mind in my neighborhood in Broomfield, where I live. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, I know exactly what you're doing. You're plopping those variables in, but it's still just an easy way to tell me that at least you're paying attention to where I live. Like, it wasn't just like in your neighborhood. Well, what neighborhood? Like, do you know my specific neighborhood? Definitely. So I do appreciate that. Yeah, they put that in there. And I also really like, so you don't typically see these outside of financial services or insurance, but they had a buck slip. Ah, in there. And it's, you know, a handwritten note to me nice. that is telling me the number to call, telling me, reminding me that I can save up to 30% and when the offer ends. So it's just a really nice little catch all of here's your offer. We're talking to you. Here's how you take advantage. So I just thought that was a, do a whole fun. episode on buck slips and just like, <laughs> cause they're kind of like this little hidden secret, a little surprise, like a little ticket. You know, I think of like Willy Wonka with a like golden ticket inside. They so, really are. Cause like, I would be yeah. a lot more likely to just put this on my fridge than the entire letter. And so they're really using their real estate. Well, since these are so easy to add on and insert into your mailing without incurring extra cost. I think there's some really interesting things happening here, right? I'm laughing because I'm wearing my personalized necklace and was, as we're talking about personalization because it has my name on it. But um, I'm wondering if there's an element of psychology involved in this as well, because this is talking about security and your personal security. And so they're using your name, right? Yep. And so kind of sprinkling that in. And then also you're not a customer. And so we talk about direct mail being an excellent way to build relationships. Mm -hmm. Right. And consumers have raised their hand and said, I, I prefer direct mail for companies I don't know to to build a relationship with me. And so when you're just meeting someone, what do you do? You introduce yourself and you get their name. Right. Hi, I'm Kim. What's your name? Oh, you're Stephanie. Nice to meet you. Right. So, so that's exactly what's happening there. So well done. 
Good job, yeah. ADP. They did do a good job. And okay. plus the rest of their letter is just nicely formatted. There's enough white space that the copy can breathe. I can scan through it. They also utilize apparently my favorite thing in the world, which is the three call out sections down yes. the side to explain the benefits of it. So good, better, best <laughs> rule of three works for me. All right. I have one other example I want to talk about. So it's a postcard from Meineke where I get my oil changed. And again, they're using their personalization variables. They're saying, hi, Stephanie. And then it looks like your Hyundai Santa Fe is due for an oil change. So they're using their customer data to target me based on when I got my last service. They're putting in which car I have because who knows, maybe I have three cars that I take to this place. And they're making sure that I know which one instead of getting a, looks like your vehicle's due for a service. Well, which one and what service? So I really think, again, it's very simple. Like it's just, hey, hi, your car. But then they've also got their coupons and their offers so I can look through it. And I already know I'm due for the service. So I might as well take advantage of the offers they're sending me. It's personalized and it's very timely and relevant. So I think we're going to have to go head to head Valvoline versus Meineke because <laughs> I'm such a fangirl of Valvoline. I go to them like religiously. I love their emails. I love their mailers. Um, but the same thing, right? They do this so well where they remind mm -hmm. you of your mileage and your, and that's why they collect all that when you go on site, you go to their physical location, right? But yeah. they're not just keeping that data in their computer. So when you come back, they're actually feeding that data and powering it with their direct yeah. mail, right? So we talk about data and busting data out of silos and being able to use it um, in your direct mail, in your email, in all of your marketing touch points. So that's a great example of that. And I love the, the other offers that you showed at the bottom mm -hmm. because they're not just like, hey, come in, get your oil changed and get out. They're like, oh, while you're here, we could change your air filter. You know, we can check your alignment, like all that stuff they always try to upsell me on. And they're like, it's safer. And I'm like, okay, I'll buy everything. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Whereas I go in and I'm like, I drive my car once a week and I drive it like 20 miles. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay if my car is not safe. <laughs> oh God, don't say that. <laughs> All right. What examples do you have for us, Kim? Okay. I'm going to keep it really simple. Um, in my family, we have a, a, a teenager who's on a college hunt. And so we are getting a lot of mailings from um, upper higher education and I thought this was a really unique example. It's from the University of Chicago and they have this really unique kind of font that they're using. And this was a direct mail postcard. And um, it's about financial aid because University of mm -hmm. Chicago is not inexpensive. Um, none of them really are. But what I thought was so cool is that they personalized the front oh, cool. with the name in the super cool font. and. You know, I just thought that was so unique. It stood out. Like the minute we saw it in the mailbox, we were like, what? Um, also, if you have a unique name, you don't see it on things very often. And this name is quite unique. Um, so I just thought this really caught our eye, got our attention. Um, but one thing that you see missing here, there's a lot of copy. It, it's pretty mm -hmm. tiny, um, but there's not a great way to take action. Oh. And I thought, you know, if they had put a QR code on here to quickly scan and go right to like the financial aid page would have been more effective mm -hmm. in that QR codes are about 51% of consumers in the age bucket of 18 to 34, the exact sweet spot who would be <laughs> taking yeah. advantage of the postcard, right? will scan a QR code. Right. And even though maybe the parents are the ones that ultimately are going to take action on, on this, um, not, that's not always the case. Right. And sometimes the, the kid has to be like, hey, mom, dad, uh, check it out. So I thought having a QR code would have made this uh, way more effective, but super like props University of Chicago, because this is super well done. And then um, not on the personalization front, but just another <laughs> college mailing that we got that, you know, a little self mailer. It has all Fun. the different panels. Um, kind of giving all the benefits of going to SMU, which is in Dallas. And they definitely did incorporate um, QR codes, sorry, a little blur there, mm -hmm. QR codes all throughout and um, just made it very like picture yourself here, which I thought was well done. So if I could take the two of those and marry them up, um, they'd be fantastic. So uh, we also got a big glossy catalog from NYU, which was mm -hmm. beautiful, like a magazine. 
which is a very, um, as we saw from State of Direct Mail Consumer Insights, a very popular format, right? Catalogs and magazines, because they're so consumable. They're colorful, they're glossy. Um, actually, I can hold it up. Uh, really pretty, Ooh. right? But like throughout this whole thing, not a QR code, not a URL. So it really is more of a, just like, I feel Browsing. like more brand awareness kind of thing. Yeah. Um, not so much, um, but it comes from the admissions office. So interesting, but maybe this is just more of like, top of funnel, let's establish a relationship with this pr prospective student and see where we go. But there's a lot of variety out there. Yeah. I mean, that is very interesting with the University of Chicago example. Like, yeah. how are you measuring the results of this mailer? Like, wouldn't you want, yeah, wouldn't you want to send them to a landing page that's designed for them? Because even that you could do like personalization based on like the UTM parameters that are involved in that string. And it could have been, hey, Poppy, here's how you afford to go here. Like, yeah, yeah, they've done a lot. We've received a lot of mail from them, kind okay. of the full gamut of formats. We even got this really cool map of Chicago, um, all kinds. So there's a very long kind of like a uh, trail of, um, of touch points in their direct mail campaign. Um, so this is just one piece of that. But it'd be interesting for us to actually do an episode in the future where we look at all the kind of different ones and, and look at the different formats used throughout. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Well, I'm even thinking, again, just the personalization, because I really do like that artwork. It's custom. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, obviously, we know behind the scenes how they're inserting some of that <laughs> uh, dynamic content, but it does just open the door that that is very personal to her. Because, again, going yeah. back to, like, my Meineke example, if they mm -hmm. had a photo of my make and model on there, like, uh, driving to the Meineke, like, again, that's going to catch my attention because I'm like, that's my car, <laughs> like, Where's it going? What am I doing? <laughs> I thought you were going to say they were going to spell your name in like motor oil. <laughs> I mean, I have a long name. That would be very interesting to see. <laughs> Get creative, right? Well, Are I you... thought it was funny with this Chicago example because I, I was so intrigued by it that I sent it to our head of design and she pinged me today and she's like, my son got the same one. And she sent me a picture of his with his name oh, really? on it. We were laughing. So there you go. Anyway. Good job. What are we talk about next? Show. <laughs> All right. So finally, we're going to talk about sustainability because in our 2023 State of Direct Mail Consumer Insights report, we found that 54% of consumers agree that they are more likely to purchase from a brand that prioritizes sustainability. Let's see who lets their customers and prospects know that sustainability is top of mind for these brands. So first up, I am going to do a little lob plug just because I do love our little logo that we have right next to our Indisha. So it is eco-conscious mail because we send 100% carbon neutral mail and it's super small. Like it's tiny, it's right there, but it still just makes you think about it. And then if I had gotten this, okay, when it's time to take it down off my fridge, I'm going to see that and be a lot more likely to recycle it. And just making sure that that kind of messaging is top of mind. I like the little logo inside the QR code too. That was like, you don't see that often. That's me. No, you don't. I think it was luckily, on my cashmere example too. Luckily, Lob is a short name, so that helps. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess you could do like your symbol too, right? You could, yeah. 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 All right. Next up, I do have a real world example, not from Lob. And it is one of our favorite companies, Bath & Body Works. I just got their Halloween mailing, which I'm like, just people, it is July. But it's July. <laughs> they also know me. I start buying Halloween stuff in June. So I guess they know what's up. But I do like that on the uh, mailer information, they do have their FSC certified logo. So just letting you know that this paper was sourced from responsible sources. And again, just a quick little reminder of, hey, when you're done with this, when you've cut out the coupons, just make sure you recycle it. But even if you don't, they're still doing their part to make sure that sending this mailer to me was as sustainable as possible. Yeah, absolutely. We love them. We could talk about candles for the rest of the day, but you know, as marketers, we have a huge responsibility, right? To consider the natural resources we use, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to direct mail. We hear that a lot. And consumers not only told us that they're more likely to purchase from a brand that prioritizes sustainability, but they also shared 68% still opt to receive at least some like paper statements from brands mm -hmm. and 32% have opted into paperless statements from every brand that offers it. So this is very top of mind with consumers. And so if you do have sustainability goals and you are doing things to make your direct mail 
more sustainable, like show them because that mm -hmm. can like really resonate with them. So let's take a look. This is daily harvest. And I love on uh, the second, like the backside of this postcard that they encourage recipients to recycle. And mm -hmm. I like that even the copy, like keep a good thing going, recycle me, please. Like it almost makes the, the direct mail postcard feel like a living thing it does um, which it like is by calling it like me right it really personalizes it um it would actually be really cool if this was made of like seed or something you could plant it or something um right. which we've seen that before too um and then they also have their forward stewardship um council indicia on there as you pointed out in the lower right corner uh, corner mm -hmm. that's what fsc is uh, so that's really cool and I noticed it, right? We look for these things. So you can see other great examples like this on, um, actually you can see the URL right here. It's our best direct mail campaigns page. And we have a number of different examples there. Um, and so if you're a company and you're doing these kinds of motions, like show it because customers really do care. Yeah, no, I love, it kind of makes it feel almost like a Pixar character. Like yes. <laughs> I've done my journey. I've gotten to your house now, you know, scan the QR code. But then when you're done, like, please send me back to my next life. <laughs> like when a bill becomes a law. I don't know if you remember that from <laughs> Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> Good old Schoolhouse Rock. Yes, but but it's your little postcard and now you're sending it to its next life. <laughs> well, but I think that is good to know because I know we've done several blogs on sustainability here at Lob. And I think there was some that it was like, you know, depending on where the envelope comes from, like some of those windows aren't recyclable or shouldn't mm -hmm. be recycled. And it's like, I don't, the average consumer doesn't know that. Like I yeah. didn't know that. So I'm just tossing those in my recycling bin. And now it's okay. Now I want to make sure that I'm separating and taking out the letter, which then makes me give it a quick scan before I toss it in the recycling. <laughs> but just yeah. making sure that we're educating consumers when we're sending them direct mail campaign pieces of how they can responsibly get rid of it and letting them know that it was responsibly created. Absolutely. All right, Kim, do you have any final thoughts or any other pieces of mail that we didn't get to that you want to talk about or any other things from the State of Direct Mail Consumer Insights? I have so much mail, but we'll save that for another episode because um, I love it. Uh, this has been really fun. I like deconstructing and talking about um, the great things that um, brands are doing with direct mail and some of the opportunities that we all have as direct mail practitioners to do it things even better and keep learning. Yeah and growing and evolving. So I look forward to another episode soon. Thanks for having me. Well, of course. Thanks for coming back on. And like you just mentioned uh, to our listeners, if you do want to check out some other really great examples where we break down elements that are really working for the mailer, please check out our Best Direct Mail Campaigns collection page. It has that daily harvest example we showed you, plus a plethora of others again, where we focus it on different themes, such as these are letter-based campaigns. These are campaigns that use QR codes. Here are some examples of really strong CTAs and getting people to take action. You can look at all of those examples, see what's working, see what you can adapt, or just get inspiration for your next direct mail campaign. Yeah, and feel free and reach out if you have a great example that you want us to take a look at, send yes, it our do. way. <laughs> all right, well, to our listeners, thank you so much for joining us for Mixers and Marketing. If you want to dive even deeper into the topic of consumers' preferences when it comes to direct mail marketing, please feel free to download your copy of our 2022 or 2023 State of Direct Mail Consumer Insights Report at lobdemo.co backslash consumers, or you can scan this QR code over here. As always, you can browse our library of episodes over at lobdemo.co backslash lobcast. Otherwise, thanks for listening. And that's all, folks. Bye.